vibes on the way I vibe when I walk into the room. Wind blows underneath the soles of my brand new pair of shoes. All right, welcome to another episode of the Cold Calling Podcast, where we make live cold calls powered by Monster Connect. I've got Topher Evans on today. Um, actually ran into him on the phonathon with Tom and uh, Ronan, and he was mm-hmm. crushing it over there, so knew we needed to get him on the show. Topher, why don't you tell folks a little bit about yourself, why you're qualified to make live cold calls, um, and who you're going to be calling in today? Sure. So my name is Topher Evans. Uh, I work at Sync Systems. Uh, we're an accounting and management software uh, for the HOA space. Uh, the reason why I'm qualified is uh, I didn't know anything about SaaS or cold calling until I got hired on to lead a team in October of 2021. Uh, we went live January 1st, and I beat our outsourced previous SDR team by 15% with my team. And then I beat it by myself in February and continued to break the comp plan twice. So oh. I'd say you're overqualified. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I recently got promoted. So I led our SDR team through October of last year. Uh, then I was promoted to an account exec. Uh, but SDR at heart still um, love getting out in the trenches and actually going out and uh, <clears throat> killing what I eat, if you will. Yeah. Do you still uh, do you still self source a lot of your own deals? I do. So I've transitioned from going as much uh, one to many. Uh, I'm doing a lot more focused, and I'm letting my now the SDR that works with me. Uh, I'm now letting them kind of take the reins on a lot of the kind of more broad scale cold calling. I'm doing more strategic accounts that we know, kind of a modified ABM, if you will. Got it. Okay. And then who are you going to be calling on specifically today? Like anything you so, need on your list? Yeah. So today is more regional focused. Um, we have um, <clears throat> we've kind of not been calling into this particular market as much. Um, it's been part of the regular cadence, but it hasn't been a focus. Uh, so today I'm hitting up coastal Carolina. Um, so North and South, and then a couple of other bigger cities through those States. Um, it's a big HOA market. Um so there's some good prospects in there. Um, it's just some we haven't been able to break through with any other marketing means. So it's time to get in there and give them a ring. All right. Nice. Uh, I'm going to be calling sales leaders on the ba- behalf of Humantic. And uh, let's go ahead and get clicked in and start ripping some dials. Sounds good. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> Everybody is joining us. Feel free to drop any comments. Let us know um, where you're joining from. All that good stuff. <clears throat> How many meetings did you end up booking on the the phone and on? Did you did you uh, did you? I think you you took home the gold on that, right? I did. Yeah, I booked uh, four meetings. Nice. And what was, and that was uh, what was the period of time uh, that you were calling? Uh, it was just shy of four hours. Not bad. Meet me so, in an hour. Yeah. Uh, if I was getting that much during my regular time, I probably would have broke the comp plan a fourth time. So, <laughs> but it was good. It was uh, it was the right moment. Um, anybody that was in the office, they weren't doing anything else because it was in between Christmas and New Year's. So it was a good time to get their attention. Nice. Yeah. People tend to shy away from picking up the phone during those times. I don't know why. Yeah. All right. And if you have not checked out the cold calling podcast, you should do that. You can check it out on every podcast platform. Anybody who's joining us, the cold calling podcast, which is brought to you by monster connect and on the podcast, what you can expect is the best moments from these sessions, as well as the other side of some of these conversations. So you can actually hear the full context of the conversations on the cold calling podcast as well. Um, and again, it's on all podcast platforms where they're dropping daily content. 
uh, for all the cold callers out there. Hi, Elijah. This is Topher at Sync Systems. How are you? My name is Topher with Sync Systems. Uh, we're the largest provider of accounting and management software dedicated to the space. Okay. Certainly will. Do you mind if I ask you if you're on Tops 1 or Tops Pro? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, is it not working? Hey, Andrew, this is Colin with Humantic. This is actually my <clears throat> first time giving you a call here. Uh, but do you okay. have awesome. half a minute I understand so I can tell you exactly uh, why? We've I got some really interesting things that we're doing and improving in the space. Um, who... Hey, no problem. I'll try you back at a better time. Well, depending on who you bank with, you probably won't be buying anything because the bank will cover it. Okay. All right. Thank you, Elijah. You have a good one. All right. Bye. <clears throat> oh, well, crash and burn. Yeah, I got the old, oh, it's a bad time. I'm in a meeting, which <laughs> those ones crack me up. Yeah. I mean, have you ever picked up a cold call when you're in a meeting? Like ever? Never, ever. <laughs> I've picked up a prospect's phone call during a meeting, but never a random number I don't know. Yeah. I mean, who are these people that pick up know. phone call, cold calls? Well, in a meeting, <laughs> it's just their knee jerk reaction. I get it. Like they've been trained by all these other scam callers and everything else to just automatically ignore unless they know you. So it's just trying to be a little bit more personable and talk to them like yeah. they're human. Tell you what, this is my first time using Monster Connect and this is. It was a little bit more set up than other dialers I've used, but it's going flawlessly now that it's just running. So. Do you, what's your, what's your go-to opener? Do you stay pretty consistent? Or? I kind of, it depends on the tone that they answer with. Um, if they're at, at least mod, like medium tone, or if they're a little bit higher, like, Hey, thanks for calling blah, blah, blah. Uh, I go in kind of like a modified permission based opener. But if that guy, like he answered, he's like, basically his tone sounded like, what the hell do you want? Um, <laughs> I just jump into it and be like, hey, this is who I am. This is who I'm calling for. Um, I, I know you're in this space. I know what you guys are looking at. Um, and that has about a, f I don't know, about a 25% success rate of at least getting them to talk to me a little bit more. It, it's hit or miss on whether they'll actually book the meeting, but at least gets them talking and gets them thinking about what they're saying instead of just, no, I don't want to take a cold call. Yeah, It makes them actually say, no, I'm not interested in what you're talking about. And if that's the case, that's fine. I've got way more people to try to connect with. <clears throat> but if it's medium tone, I kind of take that like, hey, my name's Topher. You mind if I take a little bit of time to tell you why I'm calling today or something along those lines? Uh, I don't have a like, dedicated script that I just blurt out every time someone answers the phone. I kind of just take it off reactionary if you will yeah i like that i like that a lot so you're 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 feeding off of uh the people to kind of adjust adjust and adopt you know sort of a different way of opening up the call very few people do that uh because yeah. it's not easy to do right 
Um, and I think it's because I'm in, and I think there's yeah. different ways depending on the space. This is actually my first time giving you a call, but uh, do you have like half a minute and I can tell you exactly why I'm reaching out to you today? Ooh, she hung up on me. I'm going to call her back. There you go. Hey, Marianne, this is Colin with Humantic. Uh, I just get, give you a call, but I think we got disconnected there. But anyway, this this is my first time calling you. It, it is a cold call. Um, but do you have like half a minute and I can tell you exactly why I decided to reach out to you today? Yeah, so reason I'm reaching out, um, as I see, you know, that you're the, the VP of sales there. And I want to make sure this is relevant. So I'm, I'm not sure. Have you ever heard of Humantic before by chance? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it's nothing like that. Um, uh, you know, definitely do want to make sure that it is relevant for, for you and your team. So when your team is, you know, prospecting or reaching out to folks, uh, or maybe hopping on a meeting for the first time, whether that's in person or virtual, uh, do they have any sort of process in place for researching those people? Maybe using like a zoom info, LinkedIn sales nav, something like that. Got it. Okay. And, um, next question, you know, do you have anything in place for understanding like the personality of those people, how to build a winning connection, what the communication style is, sales landmines to avoid anything like that? Mm hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 I think, yeah, it sounds, sounds like you're probably right on that. So, um, definitely appreciate your time though. Yeah. Yeah, definitely appreciate that. So that was an unusual call back. All right, take care. Yeah, man, the double tap works. Awesome. The only time it doesn't work is when you don't do it. Gotcha. <laughs> No, sometimes it doesn't work. I mean, you just, you don't know. Like it's, you know, uh, it's like somebody saying cold calling is dead. That doesn't make cold calls. Right. No, <laughs> I was saying while you were on that one, I got someone called me back. Oh, nice. You got a call back. Yeah. Woo! Every uh, SDR's dream. <laughs> right. Um, and he's actually, so we're a use case. So we only deal with association management companies. So HOAs, POAs, COAs, things like that. All the A's. Um, part of his book of business does affordable housing and there's mm -hmm. only a handful of softwares that can handle the compliance part of that but we can integrate with them um we're working on that product now and he said he'd be glad to talk to me whenever that's ready to be yeah. talked about that was awesome yeah i mean when you get a when you get a call back, you almost want to like pinch yourself. Like, right. <laughs> is this real? Is this real? Yeah. Did this actually happen? Yeah. I know that we talked about it a little bit while we we're both on the phone a thon together. Um, is your do you normally do the permission base? Is that kind of your go to? Yeah, I um I kind of stick with that for the most part, and then I change and adopt things, you know, once I get into the conversation a bit. So you'll okay. see like I change more after opening it. Especially, I mean, when you're using 
Monster Connect where you're just having a tremendous amount of conversations, like eight to 10 times more than you're used to, you also don't hear what they say when they pick up, right? You're just, right. Getting, a, you're just getting a beep in your ear because somebody's already done that heavy lifting for you of, you know, navigating phone trees, going through gatekeepers, calling and finding the people that are picking up. Um, so that's one, you know, thing is, is you, you can't really customize that opener too much. Um, right. but after you get into that, you know, conversation, uh, then you can change, you know, based on tone and who you're talking to and, and all that good stuff. And, I pull up, <clears throat> I like to pull up people's LinkedIn. So in my, oh, uh, hey, Thomas, this is Colin with Humantic. Uh, this is actually my, my first time giving you a call, but do you have like half a minute? And I can tell you exactly why I decided to reach out to you today. Yeah. So reason I'm reaching out is really just to introduce my company to you, uh, Humantic, when I'm not calling you out of blue like I am today. Uh, but have you heard of us before by chance? Got it. Well, uh, I definitely want to make sure it's relevant. Uh, I see that you're the SVP, you know, head of global sales there. And I was just curious when your team is, you know, kind of prospecting into folks kind of like I am today, um, or maybe, you know, meeting uh, with a prospect for the first time, maybe in person or virtually, um, do they have some sort of process in place for, for researching those people? Maybe like LinkedIn sales, nav, zoom info, something like that. Okay. Awesome. Um, next question, not like a gotcha or anything like that, but do they have anything in place to understand those people, like their personality type, how to build a winning connection, you know, what they should or shouldn't do in a meeting, uh, anything like that? Got it. Okay. So it gives them on the, like the persona of the person, but not the actual person, like the personality. Got it. Awesome. Okay. Um, that's exactly what we do here at Humantic. Um, so we give you personality insights into those people. Um, we also give you the ability to personalize messages based on personality and, and a whole ton of other stuff, but I, I don't want to get too deep into the weeds. I mean, would it be worth grabbing 15 minutes on your calendar next week to just, um, you know, see how other sales leaders are driving positive outcomes on prospecting by up to 256% by leveraging this stuff. Yeah. I mean, to, to be honest, I, I talked to a lot of sales leaders like yourself and, and many are, you know, dealing with layoffs and, and stuff, just like you mentioned, um, which kind of puts them in a place where they're trying to do more with less, um, which, you know, I don't want to be pushy or anything like that, but um, Humantic, you know, that's exactly what we do is help your, your reps that you still have be, you know, much more efficient, much more productive with the people that they're reaching out to. We've even seen, you know, teams increasing conversions by, up to 6%, even on their lowest performing reps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. That's good. Appreciate it. Yeah. 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 No, I love that. that. That's, that's a good one, man. I like that. Yeah. 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 That's good. I appreciate that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I just I just did. Awesome. Ah. Yeah. Uh, 35. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For some people. Well, I definitely appreciate it. Sorry to hear about the bad news there. And uh, I'll, I'll send you, I sent you a connection request. We can, we can stay connected there. All right. Take care. Have a good one. <laughs> Got some feedback there. <laughs> Got some cold call oh. feedback. Yeah. Uh, didn't get the meeting, but, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, he just, they had a bunch of layoffs and he just wouldn't, he just wouldn't go for it. And he said, honestly, you just caught me on a bad day. I had a friend pass away yesterday. So, gotcha. uh, yeah, I mean, you, gotta, that's, you, you know, you I got, mean, you got to, it's terrible, but that's great that he told you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but you also got to be a good person, right? It's like, okay, sorry to yeah. hear that, but hey, can we meet next week? <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, <clears throat> so let's see here. All right. You getting any connects over there? What's going on, man? Uh, I've gotten two so far. Um, right. So... Are these people um, typically hard to reach or you, you think you've got a data problem over there or what's going on? No, nah, it's, they're pretty stagnant as far as data. Like they don't change numbers. They don't change emails. Um, it's more so just difficult to get them on the phone because the bigger they are, the more responsibility they have, the smaller they are, the less likely they are in the office because they're out doing inspections or whatever themselves. So it just depends on it, all of them are difficult to get in touch with in one way or another. It's the, uh, that's why we still do a lot of the, like I do in-person prospecting still. Um, I'll go out to the territory, spend a week out there, knocking doors, dropping off donuts, all that stuff. Knocking doors? You oh, mean yeah. like real cold calling? Oh yeah. 
Yeah, man. Um, um, when, and in the space I'm in, it's actually been really successful going out and doing that. Um, I know with COVID and everything else, it's been difficult to go out there and do it for a bunch of industries, but because they're like homeowner facing, they didn't ever actually shut down. Like they worked from home, but they still had to go out and do the responsibilities. So um, being able to go meet them where they're at has been impactful. I got, I was in Texas for a week in January and I got 16 opportunities out of it. Oh, wow. Yeah. How many doors did you have to knock on for that? Um, well, the good thing is we called in ahead of time. Um, so we dug through the people who definitely wouldn't be in office or definitely didn't want to see us or any of that stuff. Um, but I probably hit 30 offices over the course of four days. 30 offers, 30 offices and 16 opportunities. Yeah. Not a bad run. No, not at all. And I've already closed one of them. So, so there you go, folks, real live in-person cold calling is not dead. (laughs) No, No, I, I love when people say anything is dead, whether it's cold email, cold, look, I'm going to use everything. Like if I could send a carrier pigeon and that would get somebody to call me back, I absolutely would. Yeah. I mean, why not? Right. I think, I think, uh, you know, sounds like your, your ICP, um, it works well, right? It does. Hey, VJ, this is Colin with Humantic. Oh, we got to double tap this one. Didn't get it on that one. And usually I get a lot more conversations. Yeah, I do. Than we're going on today. 151 dials, eight conversations. It's like 18 to one. Usually it's more like 10 to one. <clears throat> yeah, I'm uh, a little bit worse for wear on yours. I'm at 42 and two so far. Um, it might be higher. Just, I'm not sure. What's your stance on voicemails? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think when you're using something like Monster Connect, then you don't really get the opportunity to leave voicemail unless you're like double tap or just like click the dialing, right? But um, 
you know, if you're working dials out of your, you know, sequencer or whatever, like, yeah, why not drop a voicemail? It's another touch yeah. point. Yeah. Most people uh, are reading. Most people, if you're calling mostly mobile, which a lot of people are, right. um, your voicemail is going to get transcribed to a text. They're going to read it. Right. So keep it short, concise and, you know, create some interest there. Gotcha. Yeah. I typically just use it as a um, <clears throat> CDA to go check their email. It's just like, Hey, it's Topher with sync. No need to call me back. Uh, I'm going to send you an email as well, but if you'd like to, and then I drop my number in. Yeah. I mean the, I think people, the reason people don't leave a voicemail is like they, they, they think that, uh, Oh, they're going to know it's me. And then they're not going to pick up my calls. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's ridiculous. No, that's, I mean, it, it, in that same vein, that's why double tap shouldn't work. And it does like people just don't recognize the number means they won't recognize it again tomorrow. Right. So. It's the same reason you don't, you know, like yet another, you know, thing point is, you know, don't write any negative notes in your, in your, in your CRM, right? Like, Oh, they hung up or, you know, this, that, they, you know, people forget, you know? So right. if I call you today and you're like, yeah, not interested. And I haven't even, we haven't even had a conversation yet. I'm calling that person back. And just because they hung up or they were short, or maybe they even said something terrible, I'm not going to put any of those notes and I'm definitely going to call them back. Like, you never know. Like, you caught them at a bad time, having a bad day, number of reasons. Um, that's not a legitimate not interested. It's just that they weren't interested in having a conversation right now. Yeah. they weren't. Interested. It's not that they weren't interested in your product. They just weren't interested in talking on the phone right then. Right. Yeah. I'm going to refresh to a new list because I'm not too... Not too uh, stoked with the low amount of conversations. Yeah. Do you find with your, yeah, it seems like you have a you know, fairly unique target. Do you find there's different, better times of the day to reach these folks? Um, not lunch. It's sacred. Like, unless I already have an ongoing relationship with them, I don't bug them. Cause it, and then afternoons typically, because most of the time their mornings, they're, they've got homeowners to deal with, or Mondays are the worst. So, but. I don't know. There's not a quote unquote bad time, but there are ones that are not as good as others. Uh, in my opinion, like I've got meetings Fridays at four fifty five. like it just, it, it depends on when you catch who, but, uh, the only thing I don't do, or I don't try to do, um, unless they're a bigger operation where I know they're swapping on breaks or whatever, because the, the gatekeepers are mainly who I'm talking to if they get to a big enough size until I can mm -hmm. get through to the, uh, the actual target. Um, however, stopping by during lunch has been very successful because they're like, we're going to have to deal with homeowners right now. Sure. We can talk for a minute. But I mean, just the only thing that I don't do for them that I've seen done in other industries, I won't call mobile outside of working hours unless I've already had a conversation with them. Oh, really? Um, I've, I've had, they go absolutely wild. Um, I've seen it work and I've seen success in it a handful of times over the past year. 
Um, but I, it just hasn't been worth the squeeze really. Does just, they get a little pissy. Yeah. Um, and some of the other tactics that I've seen that work, like, um, I call it big SAS moves where they're like the breakup emails and all those other different tactics. It doesn't work here. Like they're not, I always say when someone asks me about it, this particular niche is about 10 years behind on sales tactics because it will work. So like I need to look at SAS playbooks from a decade ago because that's where our industry is sales process wise. They're about that far behind as far as what works for selling software. Yeah. Um, the new tips and tricks and things like that, they, it kind of goes over their head sometimes, or it's almost, I don't know. I've seen some guys take more of an aggressive tone in some other industries like, Oh, I'm going to keep reaching out to you until you answer like, or any of this other stuff. And I'm just like, no, if they, it's, it's okay. There's more people to talk to. Mm -hmm. And I am, I just don't like that aggressive attack mode like i'm ambitious i'm coin operated i don't want as many meetings as i can get um to close as many deals as i can but you also have to realize these people are people yeah i mean and <clears throat> you got to know your you got to know your your industry too right i mean right and just listening to the advice that people are putting out on linkedin is not a good strategy uh no. Right. Because, um, you, you got to test and experiment your, you know, just cause somebody says, Hey, this is, you know, what works like break up email. Right. Or, you know, right. um, or this is what doesn't work. Uh, doesn't mean that's going to be the case for you. You got to test all these things yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I was very, Hey, Brett, this, Ooh, another hang up. No go on the double tap. Mm. Yeah. In the beginning I was, I was probably testing too much. Like I was testing too many things at once. Mm -hmm. um, but then I started kind of paring it down, started doing like AB group testing. Like, let's try this here. Let's try this here. Um, and there's some things that did work well, like, um, I know the deliverability guys will hate me for this, but throwing in a GIF that I put in increased the response rate and click rate by 26%. Just because I could show them, like, for us, and I know it's a little niche, but, like, violation apps and, like, being able to make a violation for HOA. Like, with our app, you can do it in the space of a GIF. Like, it's under 30 seconds, and a letter's created, and it's done. And being able to show them that and show them how easy it was, was really impactful for the cold email if we couldn't get them on the phone. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, and, and sometimes like if, you know, if uh, something's working, then, then, then you do it. Right. And right. obviously that could be a couple of, could be for a number of reasons, right. It could be, Hey, these people, are not used to seeing these type of stuff, you know? And so it stands out, you know, drastically compared to the stuff that they're used to seeing, right? Where right. in SAS and tech and stuff like that, like, you know, the gifts and all of that is kind of been overdone, right? It's like right. not, it doesn't stand out that much anymore. Um, where in an industry like you're targeting, that could stand out in a big way, right? There's lots of industries where like, if you send them a video, it's like, it might be the first video they've ever received from a salesperson. Right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and you just, uh, we've candidly, uh, I think we need to revisit video uh, on that particular subject. Um, we tried it, but we didn't have any training on it. We didn't have like, we had a tool that said we could shoot videos and we we're like, Oh, let's try it. Um, I think we could revisit that and make it a little bit more useful. Uh, but I think that's more one-to-one. -one. I don't think that's something we could scale where we're at just because I think the messaging needs to be more tailored for it to be impactful with video for us. Yeah. 
I, I still find that phone, you're going to book the most meetings, but you can use all these channels to make those calls warmer to reference, oh. you know, there's some familiarity, especially if you send a video or something like that, um, you know, to these people. Um, anyway, that we're going to wrap up today's session. Uh, Topher, thanks so much for joining yeah. man. Appreciate it. Um, any final thoughts about, you know, people that are out there hitting the phones and then where's the best place for people to connect with you? Sure. So if you're hitting the phones, um, I know that a lot of people give advice on disconnecting from the outcome. Just go through the motions. Um, but I kind of want to reframe that and state it as disconnect from the micro. Like, okay, someone hangs up on you, just let that go. But always stay connected to the macro. Like, understand why you're doing what you're doing. That way it makes the micro just go away. So if one person hangs up on you, it doesn't matter. You've got a number to hit. You've got your why to go after. Um, I don't personally love HOAs, but I do like helping people and I do like supporting my family. Um, so if you're looking to connect with me, I'm on LinkedIn all over the place. Uh, it's just toe for Evans. Um, and I'd be happy. I accept any connection requests that come in. I'd be happy to chat with anybody if they're having some problems with their cold calling and see what they could do. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, Topher, again, thanks, uh, for coming on the session. If you haven't checked out the cold calling podcast, do that now it's on every podcast platform. You can hear the best moments, uh, from people like Topher from these sessions. And you can also hear the other side of these conversations as well. Thanks to everybody who joined and we will be back same time next week.